morning and welcome to another vlog. It's a beautiful winter day outside. It's cloudy, it's overcast, it's cold, but unfortunately that means my dark house is even darker. <laughs> so I hope you can see me. According to my magical almanac, the color of the day is brown and the incense of the day is marjoram. I don't have any marjoram, so we are gonna burn some myrrh instead. I love the smell of myrrh incense and I have a huge box of it, so it's kind of like my go-to all-purpose incense when I don't have anything else to burn. And I like to wear the color of the day when I can, and the only thing I have in brown is this kind of like oversized flannel shirt and my tiger's eye crystal. Tiger's eye is one of my favorite stones. It has an underlying energy of strength and courage, so I wear it anytime I feel like I need those properties in my life, which is pretty much all the time. <laughs> I'm wearing it today because it's brown, but hey, I'll take a little extra strength too. So I'm about to make another pot of coffee. It's the afternoon. I uh, had a webinar class for my herbalism classes this morning and I published a video and now I'm ready to have some lunch and some more coffee. So I pulled out my box of Door County that a subscriber gave to me and we're gonna see what new coffee flavor we're gonna try today. Let's see, I've tried that one. Ooh, peanut butter crunch, y'all. We're gonna try peanut butter crunch today. It says an enticing flavor of melt in your mouth peanut butter cookies. Oh my God, I'm not sure if I need this one or not, but we're gonna try it anyway. I can't smell it. Let me open it up and see if I can smell it. It smells like peanut butter cookies for real. Mmm. I'm excited about this one. So by the way, I have ordered a couple of small like tabletop lights that I hope might help with my lighting that maybe I can put in the corners of my cabinets when I'm working in the kitchen. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Hopefully they help some because I know my house is very dark and I just hate the way it looks when I have to turn on that overhead light. And once it starts getting dark, like I have to or you're not gonna be able to see me at all. So maybe we can do without that and get some better lights. And I think maybe tomorrow or the next day I'm going to try and use that French press with the espresso that Nikki sent me from New Zealand. Really excited to try that. Oh, we're almost out of coffee filters and you know what I'm going to do is get a reusable like washable coffee filter. We used to have one of those. I don't know what happened to it. But I'm gonna get another one of those so we don't have to use the disposable uh, filters anymore. But I'll wait until I use those up because in my opinion it's better to use those than to just throw them away and they ha that's even more wasteful in my opinion. So I'm gonna use the ones we have. Oh I gotta put water in. I also need to clean the coffee pot out today. I think we're gonna do that. Um, it needs it very badly. I mean, I think it's been months since I have cleaned this out properly, like with running vinegar through it. So we're gonna do that today and I'll show you how I clean it out. Okay, I put a little bit too much water in there. I'm gonna have to dip some out. I've been getting into the habit of every time before I start cleaning or start my daily housework, I like to light a candle and some incense. I just like the vibe that it gives to the house. I like the energy that it gives and makes things smell nice. It just puts me in a more receptive mood for housework I guess you could say. I also want to do some things in the living room today because I've been neglecting it while I've been working on the kitchen and trying to declutter the kitchen but I still have a lot of cabinets that we need to declutter in here so I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I feel like doing after I have my coffee and lunch. Okay the peanut butter crunch is done. It smells so fantastic. I just don't know how there's gonna be a peanut butter flavor in coffee. Like it smells good, but I wonder if the flavor is actually going to come through. It kind of reminds me of like caramel coffee. I've never uh, tasted a coffee where the caramel flavor actually comes through, but you can smell it. So let's see if this is the same. Oh no, you can taste it. It really does have a flavor of like peanut butter cookies. That's good. I just hope it doesn't make me want to eat peanut butter cookies, you know? Like, I don't need to be craving peanut butter cookies. Mmm, that is delicious. We gotta get Andrew in here. Baby! Come try this. It's really good. Oh, I shouldn't have told him I thought it was good. I, just, I don't want to give him any preconceived notions. Okay, here's your cup. Pour yourself some and give it a try. You're so tall, I gotta adjust the camera so we can see your face. <laughs> 
I always forget how much taller you are than me. You're like a foot taller than me. <laughs> he's he's tall. Try All right. What do you think? Mm, I like it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. I love it. This is like one of my favorite flavors, I think. I'll take a bag of that. Okay, so now that I've got my coffee, I am starving. Maybe I should have waited to light the incense until after lunch. That's okay. I have plenty. I literally have like, I think I have 100 or 120 sticks of myrrh. So we'll just burn some more. <laughs> but uh, I am going to eat some leftover burger patties. So last night I cooked 15 hamburger patties in the air fryer because I bought one of those huge packs of hamburger patties. And that's like really all I've been wanting to eat lately. I've just been craving the hamburger patty with butter. And uh, I do have some steaks in the fridge that we might cook tomorrow, but today is hamburger day. So I will probably eat this twice, once now and once later. I've been eating twice a day and I haven't been fasting anymore. If anybody's wondering about that, I've not been doing any intentional fasting. I've just been eating whenever I'm hungry. And it has been about twice a day. I have never eaten three times a day. I usually get hungry right around like 12, one in the afternoon. And then I get hungry again about like seven or eight at night. And I just eat both of those times until I'm full and I'm good. I know that I am losing more weight. I can tell by the way my clothes and stuff are fitting. Um, the last time I put on this orange shirt, it did not fit me and now it's like loose. So I know that I am definitely losing weight. I can tell like my arms are getting smaller and stuff, um, but I haven't weighed myself and I'm not gonna weigh myself until February 1st, but I feel great. I'm sleeping really well. I just feel overall so good and healthy. Um, I have tons of energy. I'm getting so much stuff done. It's just, I feel amazing. So I'm very happy with how everything's going with my carnivore diet. So let's get the burger patties going. I actually have three containers full of hamburger patties. It took like all of my containers. Um, I'm just gonna heat up probably two of these right now. And then I'll see if I'm still hungry after that. I usually start with two. Sometimes I can eat three. I got those in the microwave, so I'm gonna get my butter out now. Yeah, I noticed that about the egg shortage, they finally got some eggs back in stock at our local store at Walmart. They don't have any at Natural Grocers as far as, far as I know. Um, but the cheap, like white factory farm eggs are $6 a dozen. That's like normally how much the pasture raised eggs are. So that was crazy to see. I'm just gonna wait this out before I buy any more eggs and wait until they get pasture raised back at Natural Grocers. I'm not even gonna play this game. I don't need eggs that bad. I do have two eggs in the refrigerator right now and we might be able to get some from Andrew's coworker um, who has chickens. So I'll see if I can get some from him. So I'm gonna do, uh, I usually start with a tablespoon of butter. So I'll put like half a tablespoon of butter on each of my hamburgers and eat it that way. Sometimes I like them cold and sometimes I like them warm. Today I'm gonna heat them up. And these two burgers look different because one of them is a bacon cheddar burger and one of them is just a regular hamburger. And um, the bacon cheddar burger was from like two days ago when we made those. So I wanna eat that before it goes bad. So does anybody else hate overhead lights? Um, whenever I was a kid, my mom never would have overhead lights in our house. Like they just did not exist. We did not have overhead lights. If there was a light fixture overhead, it didn't have a light bulb in it and it didn't work. We only had lamps and candles. <laughs> My mom did not like overhead lights. And as a result, I don't either. I don't like them either. Um, so as I was talking about earlier, I got some small lights that I, I hope I can put around in the kitchen so we don't have to use that horrible glaring yellow light as much. Um, <laughs> but we might still have to use it today because it is dark outside. It is really dark outside, which I love. I love these kind of winter days, these kind of dark, gray, dreary days. They just bring me so much joy and happiness. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that, but they do. And like I said, we get them very infrequently here. So when we do have them, I it just, I'm so happy. All right, y'all, I'm gonna enjoy my burgers for lunch and I'll see you back in a few minutes. Okay, we're gonna try something. So I'm bringing in my big ass streaming light in here and we're gonna plug it up and see what it looks like. <laughs> I don't know how this is gonna work. Um, if it's, I'm hoping that it's gonna like spread light across the room, but we'll see. All right, I'm gonna put it over in this corner. 
by the door and then I'm going to like kind of point it up there we go uh oh can it even reach a plug-in I don't know okay I'm actually going to have to scoot it over light does that give us does that look better is it brighter can you see more it's just it's so big and bulky that I hate having it in here because my kitchen is already small enough and then I have this huge ass light that I have to navigate around anytime I need to go in the laundry room or let the dogs out so that's why I ordered the smaller ones that I hope are gonna fit onto the countertop but for today we'll use this because when I edit my videos back, I'm like, man, they look so dark. So I've got to do something. Damn, this dark house, y'all. My dream house. I want to have lots of natural light. I want to have lots of windows and natural light coming in. Because I am tired of living in this dank-ass dungeon. <laughs> and my hair journey, okay, things are going well. But I am trying to make it one more day before I wash it. So that I wash it on the third day. And so I just feel like it's uncomfortable to me. I'm not used to going this long without washing my hair. I was washing it every day and then I started washing it every other day and now I'm washing it every three days and now on like the second day it starts to feel really uncomfortable and like I feel like it's oily and because my hair is so thin if there's too much oil it just like weighs it down and I look like I look bad. Um, so I don't know why I feel the need to have to defend myself in every video about how my hair looks, but it's just like something that I'm really self-conscious about. Even though I know I shouldn't be, I'm trying to do what's best for my hair, but it's just like, I think that self-consciousness about my hair is always going to be with me. Since I have androgenic alopecia and my hair is thin and I think it's just something that I'm always going to struggle with, so... For some reason, I feel the need to blather on about it in every video. Sorry. Look how green my eyes look in this light. You can really see the color. I am the only person in my family uh, to have green eyes in my generation. So my grandpa, my dad's dad, had green eyes. And I was the only one of the grandchildren to get green eyes. And my dad nor none of my aunts and uncles got green eyes. They all have blue eyes. And I was just the oddball that got green. So... Um, I love that. I love that I got that from my grandpa. Okay, so a couple more projects that I want to finish in the kitchen today. First, I want to clean out the coffee pot, and then I want to clean my cutting boards. And I'm going to show you how I do both of those as naturally as possible. So with the coffee pot, I'm going to run white vinegar through it, okay? And this is like, in my experience, the best way to clean the inside part of your coffee maker. And I'm just going to go dump out these old grounds. Okay, and I'm not going to put a filter or anything in here. I'm just going to leave it dry. And I'm going to pour straight up distilled vinegar in here. White distilled vinegar in here. Um, to about... Let's see. Just until I start to see the line. The liquid line there. That used quite a bit of my vinegar jug. So it's probably about four to five cups. You can see, just barely see the line right there. And then I'm gonna fill it um, the rest of the way oops, with cold water. And I'm gonna fill it up to about, uh, I think I'll just fill it all the way up to 12 cups. We've never ever made 12 cups in this coffee maker. We need like a smaller coffee maker that's just more for two people, I think. So I'm gonna turn it on and I'm gonna let that run through and um, then we'll come back to that and it's gonna smell like vinegar in here but that's all right i don't mind the smell of vinegar to me it smells like clean so next my cutting boards really really need to be cleaned very badly and um, these are bamboo cutting boards and i'm going to show you how i clean mine um now this might not be the best way in the world there might be better ways i don't know this is just how i've always done it and it works really well for me so i've got my big jar of baking soda right here i'm going to be using baking soda and a fresh lemon the only thing i use lemon for is to clean not to eat so i'm going to start with my small cutting board and i'm just going to kind of prop it up in my sink and i'm going to get some baking soda in this cup not a ton just a little bit Oh, and before, I need to use my cutting board before I clean it so I can cut my lemon. So I'm just going to cut this lemon in half. Like 
like this. Take the sticker off. We'll set that aside. And then I'm gonna put the cutting board back in the sink. Okay, and I tried to get some more light over here, so hopefully this helps. And then I'm gonna sprinkle, well actually first I'm gonna get my cutting board wet. Okay. And then I'm gonna sprinkle some baking soda on it, like this. Then I'm gonna take one of this, these half of lemons and I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of the lemon juice on and I'm gonna scrub it with the actual half of the lemon, like this. And this should get all of the odor and any food particles that are stuck on it off. And I'm gonna do this to all three of my cutting boards. And this is just, this, I find that this works really effectively for cleaning these bamboo cutting boards. All right, then I'm gonna rinse it off. And don't worry, we're not gonna leave it like this. We're gonna oil these boards as well. So after I rinse it off, I don't use any soap or anything on it. I just rinse it off and then use a dish towel to kind of dry it as best I can. It's not gonna get all the way dry and that's okay. Okay, and then I'm gonna set this aside to dry while I do the other two. This board right here, I probably use the most. Um, it's just a good size. Oh, let me get it wet. And so I end up using it for everything. Before we went carnivore, this was our uh, vegetable board, so I used it a lot. I'm just gonna sprinkle some baking soda on. And then I'm gonna use that same uh, lemon slice. I think it'll be good again. I'm just gonna squeeze some of the juice on and then use that to scrub. So yeah, this one, I don't think I have really like thoroughly cleaned these in a couple of months. Now granted, I don't use them a ton anymore, but I do still use them from time to time. I use the small one for cheese a lot, and then I'll use these larger ones for things like cutting sausages and stuff like that. So they do get used and they do need to be cleaned. Okay, let's rinse that off. And then dry it off. Okay, now I'm going to set this one aside to dry as well. And now I just have my large cutting board to clean. So I'm going to start by getting it wet. And then I'm going to sprinkle the baking soda on. Then I'm gonna take my other half of a lemon and I'm gonna squeeze the lemon juice on. And then I'm gonna use that to scrub it down. Ooh, a lot of chunks in that baking soda. So like I said, I don't know if this is the best expert way to clean a cutting board, but this is just always the way I've done my mine. And it has never caused me any problems. It works really well, the baking soda does, to get any like food smells out. Okay, let's rinse this off. Okay, then we're gonna dry it. And after these completely dry, I'm gonna leave them sitting out for probably an hour at least until I'm sure they're completely dry, then we're gonna oil them. So these, this is the kind of thing that I feel like needs to be done probably like once a month in my kitchen. So like cleaning the cutting boards and cleaning out the coffee pot and just these kind of like deep cleaning tasks. I like to do this once a month whenever I'm on track. 
and I'm getting back on track after December and after basically all of last year I feel like I was off track on everything in my life but I'm getting it back together now so another thing that you can do is to put these old lemons down the garbage disposal if you have a garbage disposal and it makes it smell smell really good and kind of cleans it out down there and there's gonna be like some baking soda I might even just put the rest of this baking soda down in the drain so I'm just gonna sprinkle this down into my sink drain and then just to kind of speed things up i'm gonna cut these into smaller pieces because i don't know if my uh disposal can handle the whole half lemon so i'm gonna cut that into two and we'll do that one first okay even that was a bit much y'all does anybody else freak out when you have to stick your hand in there i hate sticking my hand in here i'm like terrified it's gonna eat my hand even though I know it won't oh I hate that I hate that I hate that okay I need to cut this into smaller pieces and I think I'll just do one half down there you just have to think about what yours can handle like we don't have the strongest disposal so I try not to put huge chunks down there so in the meantime I'm just allowing my uh cutting boards to dry on my stove like this I just put them on top of the burners that way they get some air circulation on the bottom and top and they should be completely dry in an hour or two so the vinegar has run through the coffee pot I'm gonna pour this out wow look at all those coffee grounds that came out okay I'm gonna kind of rinse this out Whew, smells like hot vinegar okay and then we are just gonna run straight up water through this to kind of rinse it out so I'm just gonna fill this up all the way it's turned off right now fill it all the way up with cold water to 12 cups and we're gonna clean the outside of it too because it's getting pretty grimy a white coffee maker is not ideal because it shows all the coffee stains all right gonna turn this on and let that run through and honestly cleaning the coffee pot probably needs to be done once a week for as much as we use it we make probably two to three pots of coffee a day um so yeah i should probably be doing this once a week and i can't even tell you the last time i did it so yeah getting caught up okay so the water has run through again and oh my god there's so many coffee grounds in this there's like all these coffee grounds just floating around in here so i'm gonna pour this out and rinse it out and i'm gonna run water through it another time so I usually like to run through two pots of pure water just to get all the vinegar, all traces of vinegar out. Oh, now I know why there's so many coffee grounds coming out, y'all. When I took the little filter part out, there's all kinds of coffee grounds in here. All right, I'm gonna have to try and clean this out somehow. Let's see, maybe we could turn it on the side like this and kind of spray it out. And look how stained that is. That's all just like coffee stains. All right. There, I think that got it. Okay, one more time, we're gonna run through a full pot of cold water. So the next thing I wanna do is clean out from underneath the spice cabinet or spice rack. I actually need to clean out the whole spice rack itself um, and then clean under it. It's just like, the, none of this has had any intention in so long. It just, it needs to be done. So let's get started with the spice rack, I guess. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna pull this out from the wall and you can see there's like a bunch of crap back there and wow there's my minced onion hmm so we're gonna clean all that out but i need to clean like this out i need to clean this part out there are so many spices so this actually pulls out like this um i think i originally had had this turned this way i don't know but anyway it pulls out like this and you can pull the spices out so I'm gonna just check and see which spices I wanna keep and which ones are no longer good because they're old or we just don't use them or what. Cause we got too much in here. Now I honestly don't use a lot of these spices anymore now that I've gone on the cardboard diet, but some of them I will still keep because I think it might be fun to like play around with making my own spice blends and stuff. So curry powder, July 3rd, 
2000. I don't know what that says. It just says best by July 3rd, 22, I think. So I think this curry powder is no good or expired, which I mean, it would probably be fine to use, but I'm trying to clean out. So anything that says it's expired, I'm probably going to get rid of it. Um, this is some oregano leaves, which I think this is years old, literally. This says, yeah, February 2022. So that's going to go. This, is, this has got like some gross stuff on the top. I don't even know what that is. Freeze-dried chives. Um, best diffused by July 18th, 2023. Hmm, this is still good, so we'll keep that. Minced onion has no date, so I guess it's good forever. <laughs> Parsley flakes, um, these are just like cheap spices. Best diffused by January 10th, 2025. Wow, that's got some life left on it. All right, we'll keep that. Um, this is like almost empty, so I'm gonna go ahead and toss that. I really don't like these plastic spice bottles, but these are things that I bought in the past. And so I'm gonna use the ones that I can, I guess, or keep the ones that are good. November 5th, 24 on this, oh! Oh my God, I almost dropped that and I caught it. Wow, um, ground ginger. God, I love ground ginger. Um, this is cream of tartar, which looks like it's good until 2025. Right here, I've got some smoked paprika. I feel like I just bought this. Yeah, 2025 on that. I've got cayenne pepper, good till 2025. I don't even know if that's ever been opened. Ground cinnamon. Um... 2021 that needs to go all right that's like two years expired okay uh so the thing with spice is like they're not gonna go bad they're just not gonna be very potent anymore so uh here's some more cayenne pepper which i don't see a date on this oh yeah september 5th 2021 two years expired that one can go um we've got pumpkin pie spice i'm never going to use this but i might keep the little jar though i might clean this out and keep the little jar because i could put some kind of herbs in that so i'm gonna make another pile for that okay we've got some time here let's see june 31st 23 so that's still good We've got some rubbed sage, which I don't really know if I have a use for this anymore. Okay, it expired in 2022. Wow. I've got some ground cumin. Best diffused by May 5th, 25. Okay, I definitely keep that. I love ground cumin. Ground coriander, 2023. I don't know what I'm going to do with coriander, but I'll keep it if it's not expired for now. Um, here is some old ass chili pepper. Chili, chili pepper, chili powder. It says it's good till the 2025, so. Sesame seeds. I have no use for these. Oh my god, this expired in 2019. December 13th, 2019. Okay, that's got to go. <laughs> wow, I've got some oldies in here. Um, this is vanilla extract, November 20th, 2022. I think that's still good to me. Like, I'll still use that. Um, onion powder, 2021. This expired July 2021. Turmeric, um, 2021 on that one. Ground nutmeg, 2025. This is, I just bought this. This is pretty new. These red pepper flakes, 2019 on those. So, oh yeah, the glass ones. Some of them I'm going to keep. Like the turmeric and curry powder, I don't know. I'll probably just recycle those. But the ones that are like milder, like sesame seeds and red pepper, I'll probably try to clean these out and keep them. And then uh, this mustard seed, ground mustard seed, 2021. Wow, I used that this year. Which, like I said, it's not actually bad. It's just not potent anymore. And then this Italian seasoning... Um, I don't know, so I'm going to get rid of it. Up on top, I've got some poppy seeds. 2024 on those. Andrew likes poppy seeds, so I will keep that. 
I've got some star anise. Um, this should be good. It says 22 on the bottom, so maybe not. Well, I'm going to keep it anyway because look how pretty that is. <laughs> and then I've got some garlic powder, 2024. These ground cloves, I know these are good. 20, 23 and 25 on the ground cinnamon. And then, oh, what's this? Uh, ground sage, 2024. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean this out because look how dirty that is. Okay, first of all, let me get rid of the spices I'm not keeping. Okay, and then I took my little tray out and I realized that this bottom piece just comes off. It's just like a piece of plastic. So I'm gonna wash it. I'm gonna spray it down. Let's get the scrub mommy out and some of our homemade um, dish liquid that I made in yesterday's vlog, if you didn't see that. And then we are gonna wash this. Oh, there's two. Hmm, one of these must be for the top, and I had both of them on the bottom. Well, we'll put one on the top then. I bought this little rack um, years and years ago, I think when we first bought this house back in 2016. So, because we had no place to put like our spices and stuff. It's worked really well. I think I got it on Amazon for about 20, 30 bucks, something like that. All right, now I'm gonna wash the second one. Man, this uh, dishwashing liquid smells so good. I love the citrus smell. I'm so happy to be getting some of these tasks done, some of these deep cleaning tasks that just really needed to be done. So I'm just gonna take a dish towel and dry these off as best I can. We may need to leave them sitting out. I think I'll leave them, I'll dry them and I'll leave them sitting out for a second um, while I finish the coffee pot. And then I'll put the spices back together. And I know we've been in the kitchen for several days now, but this is just the work I'm doing in my life right now. So we will move on to other rooms once I finish the kitchen. Okay, time to pour this water out of the coffee maker. Okay, I'm gonna get all around on all sides of this, scrubbing it down. Get up here to the inside. I'm going to say I think it's pretty clean from the vinegar. It's stained, but I'm all right with that. But I just want to clean the entire outside of it. Let me unplug it there. Okay, now that I've washed it all off with soap, I'm going to take my Swedish dishcloth. I'm going to get that wet. And I'm going to wipe it all down and get all the soap off. And then I'll probably go over it with the dish towel. Turn the water off. Yeah, this is much better. This is much cleaner now. Yeah, this is nice. Like I said, this needs to be done way more often than I've actually been doing it. Especially with as much as we drink coffee. Look at that. And it was like, it like you don't even think about your coffee maker getting like all dirty up under here, but it totally does. Because coffee splashes up there. Okay, that is one clean coffee maker, or at least as clean as I'm gonna get it. So I am gonna run this through the dishwasher, the craft, and then we'll put it back together later. I'm gonna move that out of the way, and now we can put the spice rack back together. Okay, so I'm gonna put the spices, uh, let me get the little mat. So I'm gonna put one of these little mats down, and then I'm gonna put the spices in here. So I'm gonna put, um, I was gonna say I'm gonna put the ones I use the most in front, but honestly, I don't really use these that much at all. So I'm just gonna kind of put them in here so they look nice, whatever. Um, I really only use my garlic and herb spice mixture these days. But like I said, sometime I might use these again. And I'm gonna put all the nice, pretty um, glass containers in front. And then we'll stack the less attractive ones back behind. And wow, this, has, this is gonna give me so much more room in here. Now that I got rid of the expired ones, there's like a lot more room. This thing has not been cleaned out in, it's been well over a year, I know, since it's been cleaned out. So hopefully I can inspire you to do some of these tasks around your kitchen that you know need to be done that haven't been done in a while. 
sometimes you just gotta roll up your sleeves and do it, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in here. It just, it should just slide in here. There we go. All right, so we're gonna say this is the front. And then I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna clean out my supplement area. So I keep my supplements on top. And I don't have many, oh, there's my garlic and herb mix, which I think I can put that on the bottom now. Yeah. So the only thing I have here is my collagen, my ovacetol, which I have not been using. Uh, maybe I should start using that again. And my magnesium that I take at night. And then my J. Crow's iodine. So I'm just gonna put those right there. Oh no, I forgot to put the mat down, hold on. Hold on. I do have some other supplements over in the basket um, on the table. But these are the ones just like my powders and things that I use infrequently um, I just keep up here. So let's put this back in. Okay, that looks so much better. Well, I just knocked my light over. No, did you hear me yelling from in there? I just knocked my light over and busted the light out. I guess good thing I'm almost done with this video. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, the whole light just busted out. Well, thank you, God of the light, because um, I just picked my light back up and it came back on. So I guess I didn't completely destroy it. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to clean this countertop where the spice rack is going to go. So I'm going to use my homemade cleaner that we made in yesterday's vlog. And I'm just going to spray a little bit on the counter and use my sponge here. Okay, need to use the scrub side right there. That's not coming off. I have to let that soak. And there's just like food and spices under here. Okay. Okay, so that's all nice and clean. And then I just wanna clean the wall back here because this never gets cleaned. So I just sprayed a little bit of my cleaner on here and then I'm just gonna wipe this down. There's like cobwebs back here. Oh my gosh. Now it's gonna smell all nice and fresh and lemony. Oh my gosh, this stupid outlet thing keeps falling off. Okay, now I'm just gonna take a dish towel and just wipe over that to kind of dry it off and make sure I got all, all the stuff off. Okay, that looks so much better and cleaner. So here it is from this perspective. It looks so much better. And now we're gonna put the spices back. Okay, I'm just gonna slide that into place. And look at that. That just feels so much nicer and more organized. So yay, this area of the kitchen is done. Okay, so the last thing that I have to do is to oil my cutting board so they are completely dry now, nice and clean. And I'm gonna use this Howard cutting board oil. This is food grade mineral oil with vitamin E. So this is what I always use on my bamboo cutting boards. It says specialized wood care for butcher blocks, cutting boards, wooden bowls, and utensils. This has lasted me a long time. I've only used about half the bottle and I've had this for probably two years because it doesn't take very much at all. And I bought this on Amazon. I will link to it down below. Here's what the bottle looks like. So it's just called Howard cutting board oil. And I'm just gonna use an old rag. I just have this like old wash rag I'm gonna use. After you use a rag for this, there's really no using it for anything else because it's gonna be like impossible to get this oil out. All right, so all I'm gonna do is just uh, kind of drizzle a little bit on here. Open it first. Drizzle a little bit on here, not too much. It's better to use too little than too much. And then I'm gonna take my rag and I'm just gonna kinda rub it all along the surface. Make sure it gets nice and oiled all over. And like this one, I think I need to add a little bit more. You don't want to be drenched in oil. And this will seal it and condition the wood and protect the wood and just help your uh, boards last longer. It works on wood and bamboo. These are bamboo that I have, if I didn't say that already. So 
So now that's nice and oiled, I'm just gonna let that sit here and let the oil really penetrate it and dry before I put it away. So I'm gonna do the same thing to these other ones. And I just store this rag um, with my cutting board, cutting board oil under the sink and I will reuse it um, every time I oil my boards. Okay, and then I just have this big one to do. Drizzle the oil on there. Just spread it around. So that's all I do for my cutting boards. And I've had these uh, for probably about like five years. And as long as I clean them and oil them, then they are doing well, you know? Just gotta take care of them. Sometimes I neglect them for weeks, months at a time, but they always shine up like new once I re-oil them. Okay, so we'll let, let these sit here for another hour or two and then I'll put them away. And I just have to take a minute to thank my viewer who bought me a coffee since last time. So thank you so much, Rebecca. I really appreciate that. I truly do. Um, thank you to everyone who has bought me a coffee. And if you would like to support the channel and make a donation of $2 or more, you can find the link to buy me a coffee down in the description box below. Thank you from the bottom of my heart heart. So thanks so much guys for hanging out with me today while I did some more projects in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I've got a lot more homey cleaning type of vlogs coming up for you because as I said in yesterday's vlog, we are working towards trying to get where we can move back to Arkansas and it's going to be a long process but we've got to start somewhere so I'm slowly decluttering and getting rid of things that we don't need to pare down our possessions. Um, hey I got rid of some spices today so... I made progress, but I actually think um, I'm gonna go and go through a few more cabinets tonight. Uh, but right now I've got some studying to do, so I'm gonna wrap this up here and I hope you all are having a wonderful winter season. I hope you're having a great week and I hope you have a great night and I will see you with a new vlog very soon. Bye.